All right, Pops, the investors who end up lending money to consumers to purchase cars, well, they, they're they screwed. And for the first time ever, we are on the brink, Dad, of the asset-backed securities. So the bundles of loans that get sold off to other investors actually defaulting the first time ever for an auto ABS deal to go and actually make it to default. And we've got two of them at the same time where this is happening. This is a testament to how poor the loans were that were written to consumers to purchase cars last year and the year before that. This happening, this is happening that in the subprime sector. So like people who have poor credit, which leads us to think yes. there's probably a repo repo mageddon that we've been talking about repo mageddon however you want to come. there's a repo mageddon eventually going to happen dad if you have for the first time ever investors actually holding the bag on one of these abs deals we've even had one of the dealerships that's implicated in this actually like go under completely this people need to be ringing the alarm bells man this is this has never happened before well it, it you know there there as somebody once said zach there's there's a first time for everything. Um, you know, there's there there there's a first time that some team in the NBA playoffs is going to come back from 3-0. It hasn't happened yet, but there's a the, the possibility exists. So, yes, there's the first time for everything that that for automobile loan ABS, uh, uh, automobile loan back securities that they they actually might default this first time. Now, you know, we're not to, to you and I, it sounds like a lot of money because it's it's I don't know three four five hundred million dollars in the grand scheme of money lent. It is nothing. Okay, it it truly amounts to next to nothing. But it if something happens once, then the likelihood of it happening a second, third, fourth, or fifth time goes up significantly. So I guess. I guess what you can read from this is that the possibility exists that this could get exacerbated and it, we could be talking about billions of dollars as opposed to hundreds of millions of dollars. And that could also impact uh, uh, lending tightening. Uh, so more restrictions for consumers to get approved for loans because financial institutions are uh, less willing, less loose uh, with their uh, requirements. Now, let's just break this down really quickly. You buy a car from a car dealership. Yes. The car dealership typically will do indirect lending, so they'll find a bank. The bank will get you approved for a loan. You have a loan. What typically ends up happening here, this is not like just for American Car Center and U.S. auto sales who are referenced in this auto finance news article. Carvana does this. CarMax does this. Most dealerships do this. What they will do is they will bundle all those loans that yes. they've placed, and they will actually sell them off. Why would they do that? Because they actually don't want to wait the six, seven, eight, nine years for the loan duration to make interest, uh, get interest off of that. They actually just want cash today. So they'll bundle all these different loans and they will sell them off as an asset backed security. Yes. And that way they can get cash today. This is with captive lenders that they either have or when the financial institutions that they work with, that's what the financial institution does. So what happened here, Dad, is we've got from American Car Center and U.S. auto sales, they had done some of these asset-backed securities deals, a couple hundred million dollars, like you said. Yes. And they are going to default, most likely. At least that's what Deutsche Bank says. And that would be the first time ever. And that is a reflection so why would they default? Because there's uh, delinquency going on at the consumer level. Consumers have just stopped paying those loans. We had some data from Truist a while back, Dad. Their loan delinquency rate through the roof up yes. over 20%. And, and, and these asset-backed securities, they're broken up into to groups, tranches is what they're called. An A tranche, a B tranche, a C tranche, a, a D tranche. And those tranches are typically reflecting the level of risk associated with that group within the ABS deal. The D tranche on this uh, deal, Dad, ACC for uh, uh, American Car Center, it, 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 the investors are screwed. <laughs> like the, the way that they uh, uh, have described it in the auto finance news article is, quote, they have to pay down considerably. There's only 38% credit enhancement remaining. And if you don't know what you're talking about with this stuff, what that essentially is telling you is that the investors, the actual investors who bought those, those uh, loans, those investors are feeling the heat because they actually aren't going to get their money back off of what they invested in. This has never happened before, and it reflects a weakening consumer. All right, Pops, CarEdge.com slash report. Why am I going there? <laughs> because this is the tool that truly levels the playing field between you and the dealer. It, it, it almost puts you in total control. 
And Dad, to be very clear here, when we look at um, ABS deals from 2022, the issuances of, of asset-backed securities, Carvana got in on the mix last year off that. A lot of the captive lenders from the OEMs did as well. They are weaker, clearly weaker is what the article says, than other post-financial crisis vintages. So everywhere you looked at, you see weakening signals in the auto finance market, and then you see tightening lending requirements and lending restrictions on the consumer when they go to purchase a vehicle today. That combination is making investors jittery, to say the least. And consumers, it's more expensive to purchase a car because the interest rate's higher and the requirements are stricter. Well, and and truth be told, Zach, I mean, it all starts with the fact that that everything, inflation has reared its ugly head. The prices of new and used cars have skyrocketed dramatically. Um, the dollar doesn't stretch as far as it used to. So more and more people are finding it more difficult in order to be able to make their car payments along with all their other financial obligations. Um, so it's just the whole thing has been exacerbated uh, by raising interest rates by the Fed and and rising inflation rates. It, it's it just speaks to the volumes of people out there that no longer have the availability of cash to be able to handle all their financial obligations. And if these loans, if these ABS uh, uh, deals actually go to default, Dad, then it also puts more pressure and makes the uh, uh, the feeling of those investors who would lend to those people, those who need to get access to credit to be able to purchase these things, it's just going to push them further away. They're going to be less and less interested. And I think that's one of the severe outcomes here. We have OEMs increasing prices of vehicles. We have dealers trying to charge an arm mm-hmm. and a leg for cars. You have interest rates for those who have subprime credit through the roof. And now you're going to have access to credit for that group go down even more if we have the first ever defaults on the ABS deals. It's kind of like a perfect storm to make buying a car with subprime credit even worse, yes. which is terrible to say. Uh, this is why it's important you go to a local credit union. We are huge advocates of going to your local credit union. But there's a bit of, yeah, I'm going to say it again, perfect storm going on here in the subprime market. And if we see these first defaults, I think that's all the indication we need that uh, you know the, the market's changing. And I think you'll see uh, fe- federal regulators uh, uh, looking more closely at the uh, lending criteria that banks are using to determine whether or not to make a loan. Because invariably, when we have these situations, it is it is primarily because there have been some loose lending uh, criteria that have allowed the banks to make loans to people that they should not have. Um, and when times are good, nobody pays any attention to that. And, and when the poop hits the fan, all of a sudden, everybody says, well, maybe we should take a closer look. 